Victory Church family, Victory Kids, and Drive 36. Just wanted to wish you all a very happy, very blessed, and very fruitful Easter. Hi, we miss you. We love you. It is Easter Sunday this week. And since Easter is a relatively obscure holiday that probably none of you have ever heard of, let me just take a few minutes now to tell you the history of Easter. <clears throat> Uh-oh. The story begins in the year 1236 when Admiral Jedediah Christmas and his assistant Friday were wrongfully accused of mutiny against the Queen's Navy. After a swift but unfair court-martial, the pair were condemned and sentenced to life in solitary confinement where they would be forced fed a steady diet of marshmallow peeps and black jelly beans and, it gets worse, forced to listen to Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber songs for 27 hours a day. In just a few short weeks, Admiral Christmas snapped as a result of his cruel and unusual punishment. And when the guards came with his daily ration of jelly beans, he overpowered them, broke out of his maximum security prison, and fled to freedom. To keep from being recognized and recaptured, Admiral Christmas disguised himself with a fake nose, mustache, and glasses. He dyed his hair red and changed his name to Billy Bob Easter. Wow. He then hijacked a jet ski and hit the open seas in search of freedom. Eventually, Admiral Christmas, uh, oh, sorry, Private Easter would land on a remote island inhabited by mutant chocolate bunnies that lay colorful eggs. True story. The guardians of this island, now commonly known as Easter Island, are large, goofy-looking stone-like creatures who survive on a diet of chocolate bunny ears and colorful eggs. Mm. To protect their eggs from the bunnies, or from the stone men, the bunnies must hide them in the tall grass so that the goofy stone men can't find them. In 1745, Private Easter's faithful companion, the good Mr. Friday, was released from his prison for good behavior and set off on a quest to find his old friend. He would eventually find him on the island that he now calls home, and the two men, Good Friday and Easter, would live out their days in freedom. And there you have the story of Easter. Thank you. I was impressed myself. That was a little crazy. What are you talking about? A long, long ago, even before you were born and you're really, really old, Easter eggs were part of the Easter blessings Ooh. of food. In Greek Orthodox monasteries, these eggs really were colored red and had a gold cross that reminded them of Christ's death and resurrection. In Christianity, Easter eggs symbolize the empty tomb from where Christ was resurrected or rose from, and he rose again. Okay, so first of all, that story that I shared earlier, I got that on the internet. Actually, no, I didn't. I made that up myself. That's not true. Don't pay any attention to that. Uh, the story that she just told you about the Easter eggs and the Easter traditions, some of that has some truth in it, and I've always wondered why we celebrate. I mean, it didn't make sense to me. Hey, Jesus died and was resurrected. Let's call her eggs. Didn't make sense to me, so I was trying to figure out why we did that, and she just answered a couple of those questions, so that's uh, actually a pretty good illustration. Why, but thank I you. Do, but I do want to actually share a scripture with you, and it's in John 12, 24, and it says, Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single grain but if it dies, it bears much fruit. It brings forth much fruit. Now, you might be thinking, what does talking about planting a seed have to do with Easter? I want you to think for a minute about Jesus as a seed. You see, the Bible says that we've all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. The Bible also says that the penalty, the punishment for that sin is death. We have to die. We have to be separated from God because sin and God cannot coexist. So what's, where does Jesus come in? Well, Jesus was God. He came to earth as a man, and he lived on this earth, and he faced the same trials, the same temptations that you and I face every day, yet he never sinned. He never committed any sin. He was perfect. And I'm going to talk more about the sacrifices and the spotless lamb a little bit later, but Jesus was that lamb. Now, Jesus had the opportunity and the right to go back to heaven and spend eternity with God. He didn't want to do that as one single seed. He wanted to take all of us with him. So... That's that's what I'm talking about. Think of Jesus as a seed. Now I'm going to take this seed that she's got and we're going to plant it in the bucket. If this seed does not die, it remains a single seed. Remember that. That seed must die. And Jesus did die, didn't he? In the Old Testament time, the, the Jews, who were God's chosen people, had a tabernacle. When they were wandering in the desert, they had a tabernacle that they could pick up and carry with them. And that tabernacle was their house of worship. And in that tabernacle was what they called the Holy of Holies. That was covered by a big curtain and nobody could get in or nobody could get out. That's where the presence of God lived. 
And if you get into the presence of God and you have sin in your life, it was instant death. You would die suddenly, instantly. So in order to go to God with a sacrifice for our sins, the people would have to come with a perfect spotless lamb. Isn't she cute? This lamb belongs to my wife, and I uh, asked her if I could sacrifice this this morning, and she said no. No. So I will not sacrifice this, but <sighs> the lamb had to be perfect, had to be spotless. It had to be the best that you had, because God doesn't want our second best. He doesn't want the, the old crippled lamb that's on its last legs and is going to die by the morning. That's not a sacrifice to God. That's, that's uh, wasting our time and his time. He wants our best, because he deserves our best. So... The priest in the Old Testament was the only person that could get to God. And you could tell the priest because he was dressed up usually kind of funny. And I'm going to dress up as best as I can remember of what the priest was dressed like. Because he had these big gaudy robes that looked like, uh, looks like the curtains that I took out of my living room. Um, that's only because these are the curtains that I took out of my living room. But they put them on. Yes, boy. Oh. Oh, yeah. And then they get these other big robes, and, and they really look silly. Oh. And then it's, uh, Let me help you out. Yeah, help me out here. I'm kind of stuck. And then they tie it off with a sash. So now the priest is walking around looking like, uh, who do I look like? I don't really know, Kevin. We can't really describe it. I can't. But you could always recognize the priest because he was dressed in something like this. Now, you would take your sacrifice to the priest, your lamb, and he would take your sacrifice into the Holy of Holies and present it to God. However, the priest also had to make sure that he was perfectly clean. He had to be ceremonially, ceremonially cleansed because if he went into the Holy of Holies, into the presence of God with sin in his life, he, he would die. die. He could die. And then your sacrifice would be there and God would never get it. So he had to do things to, to uh, make sure that he was worthy to go into the presence of God. He had to make sure his hair was perfect. He had to uh, put on cologne and deodorant, and I didn't bring any of mine. Oh, so, Kevin, I um, think you're wrong again. He had to uh, clean himself off with some, uh, some uh, baby wipes, which uh, I don't have any of them either. And mm. probably the most important thing... Oh, no. He had one of these that he would use to chase off any evil spirits because Kevin, evil spirits can't get in there with God. Now, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. They had to work, uh, uh, had to offer a sacrifice of a perfect lamb. She won't let me do that. That is so not nice. Yeah, but you wouldn't let me offer it. So I'm going to go with the next best sacrifice, and this is probably the best thing that I could ever think of to sacrifice. This is the king of all donuts. He this really likes them. This is a Boston cream, and in the world of donuts, Boston cream reigns supreme. Just so you know, don't think of eating my donut. Uh, not a problem there. This donut is, is my sacrifice to God because this is something that really means a lot to me. So as we uh, give, give our sacrifice, the priest would then take it into the Holy of Holies, offer, we hope he offered it to him. Now, if I gave him this as a sacrifice, I'm guessing the priest probably went in there and ate it himself. Mm -hmm. That's what I would have done if I was the priest. Good thing I'm not a priest, right? Good thing. Because I'd be really fat because everyone would give me donuts and I'd eat them all. So, if you remember now and you're wondering where I'm going with this on an Easter, we remember planting the seed and unless that seed dies, it can't bear any fruit. Well, Jesus, how many know that Jesus didn't stay alive? He died. Oh, that was he super died sad. On the cross. Terrible. Now, I want to make this perfectly clear. D Jesus did not get murdered. Nobody killed him. Voluntar I mean, he gave his life voluntarily. Yeah. He chose to do that. He did that for you. He did that for me. And the Bible says that he became our high priest. Okay, Jesus was the one that was dressed like this that could go into the presence of God, but it gets even better. This is what happened when Jesus died. He was, they put him in the ground. He bore much fruit, didn't he? He did. He didn't stay a seed. He didn't stay one singular seed. And if you remember, the church started out with 12 people. And then it went to 120, and then it went to 3,000, and then it went to all around the world. Think about how Jesus traveled around the world, because people loved him because he died. He buried himself in the ground, and then he rose again, and when he did, he bore much fruit. Now, if you think of the, res uh, the, Christ the Easter story, sorry, I was thinking of Admiral Christmas. The Easter story, Jesus died on the cross. Now, the Bible says that when he died, that veil 
that separated man from God in the temple, it said that veil was torn from the top to the bottom. It just tore it in half. It didn't just open it up so the priest could walk in. It tore it and it threw it away. So you know what that means now? What? That means that all of us have access to the, to the presence of God. We can all get to God. Oh, no. That was loud. I think that's a good idea. I think that's awesome. So now, if this was the presence of God, let's see what's in here. Uh oh. We can now get to God. Ooh, this does look good. This looks almost as good as a Boston cream donut. Oh, no. Help what is me there here, better uh -oh. in the presence of God than <laughs> Oreos, milk, and cookies? I do agree, but I think you're a little bit wrong. It doesn't get any better than that, folks. Milk and cookies. Now, having said that, milk and cookies is not the fullness of God. No. But however, when Jesus did die, that veil that covered the altar, that covered the uh, Holy of Holies, was torn. We now have access to Jesus Christ. We have access to God through Jesus Christ. We can have everything that God has to offer, including milk and cookies. So, you may be wondering where this leaves us now. I've mentioned earlier, the Bible says that we've all sinned. When we sin, that means that we can't spend time with God. God is perfect. He's holy. He's just. He cannot live in the presence of sin. So if we've got sin in our life, we can't be in, in the presence of God. We have to repent That's not and good. ask for forgiveness. We have to do what? Repent and ask for forgiveness and ask Jesus. You see, in the Old Testament times, you had to have a priest. Once a year, that priest could go into the presence of God, take a sacrifice for you, and make atonement for your sins. When Jesus died, that veil was torn. That separation, that barrier between you and God was removed once for everybody. I think that's good news. That's good news. And as Joanne mentioned earlier, all we have to do to get that is repent. All we have to do, repent means we apologize, we say we're sorry for what we do, for our actions, and we turn around. So if you want to ask Jesus into your heart, if you want forgiveness of your sins, you want eternal life, the abundant life, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for taking my sins. Thank you for taking my sins. And making me righteous. And making me righteous. Because when I have sin in my life. Because when I have sin in my life. I can't spend time with God. I can't spend time with God. But when I'm righteous. But when I'm righteous. I have full abundant life. I have full abundant life. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you Jesus. For tearing that veil. For tearing that veil. Thank you for opening the way. Thank you for opening the way. So that we can get to God. So that we can get to God. And we don't need a priest. And we don't need a priest. Because you Jesus. Because you Jesus. Are our priest. Are our priest. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for your righteousness. Thank you for your righteousness. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay now if you just prayed that Woo! prayer with me. Yeah, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. Josh says they might lose their voice. Mindy argues with that and says they won't lose their voice because they're angels. Don't know, don't really care. The, ang the angels in heaven are excited. We're excited for you. We would like you to share that with us. If you can, get online. Send Instagram us, us at BC Now. Send us an email at Voice of Victory. Have mom and dad do it. Reach out. We will give you some um, materials that you need. We miss you. We love you. We can't wait to get back together. Until then, keep watching us on Virtual Victory, where the message is virtual, but the victory is real. We Bye, love you. everyone. See you next week. We love you. Can I have a cookie now? Yes.